welcome back to Thoughts of the Roundtable with me, Matt Rebar. And me, Paul Laux. Ooh, I said that very nice today, didn't I? And me, Paul Laux. You would have thought maybe you worked in commercial radio at some point? I don't know. <laughs> um, so last time we were on the podcast, uh, you mentioned the MH370 documentary on Netflix. You said, hey, you got to watch it, and I want to talk about it. So I've watched it, and today we're going to talk all about Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 and the new Netflix documentary, which the documentary itself is called MH370, The Plane That Disappeared. So, Paul, uh, why don't, do you want to kick us off? Like, what do you want to talk about? Or, like, what was your thoughts on the documentary, I guess? Should we talk about, like, what we thought about the documentary first? Yeah, so first off, I'd like to say that I thought it was funny that you didn't know what this was. And maybe that's because I incorrectly or did I didn't explain it well enough. Is that true? I wouldn't say you didn't explain it enough. You just said, do you remember MH370? And, like, the name on its own for me was like, wait, what is that? The second you say the plane, the Malaysian plane that disappeared, boom, I know what it is. So <laughs> I, I, it wasn't like you were like, I don't know, it wasn't like a lack of communication. Just, like, on its own, you know, I was <laughs> struggling to be like, what, what is that? But then, of course, like... Once you told me, oh, it's the plane that disappeared, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this, because this, so, this was big news. So long story short, it was 2014, correct? Am I getting that right? March of 2014? Ooh, I believe so. I can double check for yeah, you. Yeah, okay. And yeah, everyone March knows. March of 2014. It, mm-hmm. So I guess we can kind of give a recap of what the documentary is and then what we believe, because mm. what's in the documentary may not necessarily be what we personally think happened. And since it's about the documentary, I guess we should kind of go over that. So, long story short, the plane left from Kuala Lumpur and was going to uh, Beijing Mm -hmm. and flew over the Malaysian Peninsula, over into the South China Sea, turned around, back over the peninsula, turned south, vanished forever. Mm -hmm. The three stories that were, and I, I guess we should put a spoiler alert on this, but Whatever. If you're getting in, you've gotten this far, then you probably already know there's going to be spoilers. So whatever. So it was based off of three, and I really was really thought it was cool because it was three episodes, and each one was a different like main theory. Yeah. And I was really excited for you to kind of f- see which one because I I actually fell into one that I was kind of surprised by, and I, I wanted to see what you fell. So the first one was simple pilot suicide for whatever reason. He turned around the plane, flew backwards, flew down, and, and we'll go more into these in detail, uh, depending on what we think, but flew down towards uh, Antarctica mm-hmm. until the fuel ran out, ditched the plane, whatever. Everyone dies, pilot suicide. Fairly mm-hmm. simple, straightforward, to the point. The second one was a little bit more interesting where um, there was – believed to be Russian was it Russian what did you say Russian spies or a Russian operatives no there on was the plane? just three there was like three Russian civilians on the plane and the theory is that the, these three Russian surveillance you know could these three Russian civilians could be part of some kind of like army or you know KGB backed operation to basically uh, bring the plane disappear the plane uh, and so he theorizes that they landed somewhere maybe Kazakhstan um, and that Russia did this to get press off of their recent, like, weak recent uh, takeover of Crimea that was happening at the same time. So basically, like, this plane, the Russians disappeared the plane as a way to get people off their back for um, their invasion of Crimea. And w- and we should say that they didn't think the plane landed in cause they, they assumed it still crashed. But they crashed it north instead of south. Mm, here's the thing. The one guy, he was like, well, he he maybe thinks like that those three Russians basically landed the plane and then everyone else died. That's, I think, kind of what he thinks happened. Did he think they landed it? Because I thought he just assumed they still crashed it. Mm, just north I, instead he, of south. I, he, I'm pretty sure he thinks that like they would have landed it. So, But then what would they have done with all the people? Well, the people would have been killed if they had... Take, if they had oh, depressurized the point. cabin. So they would have just, the three of them would have just. But then here's another question I have, though. If the two of them were like, you know, they did the two of them had like the little well, fight. Hold on. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's pause. 
Because I think we should go over the last one. Yes, of course. And this last one, I think both of you, you and I, have already spoken a little bit. And both Mm -hmm. of us think this is one way outlandish and not possible at all. Which is, in a pretty simple thing, that um, there was cargo on the plane that the U.S. did not want to get Mm -hmm. to China. For whatever reason, whether it's technology, Mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows what could it be? So the United States intercepted it and took it down and then kind of used whatever means they had necessary to hush it up. In my opinion, that one was pretty far-fetched, pretty... Even some of the weirdest theories out there was just way, way, way out there. It didn't really make any sense. It would have taken so much coordination to cover up. So that one was... We won't even really talk about the third one because it's just it doesn't make sense re- regardless. I think both gonna... the second and the third one. I think the only of the three theories they presented, the only one that makes to me any possibility has to be the pilot suicide. Well, I think the Russian one is a bit far fetched, and I do think that the product, the product, the idea that there was a product on board that the U.S. had to intervene. I, I, no, I I don't know. That just is like. Well, here's the thing, and it's good you say that. I think I'm falling more into that theory, the Russian one, because oh, and there's God. always well. this. There's always <laughs> this, because for a few reasons. The, the well, the idea behind it is that they got into the cargo bay and were able to control the plane somehow, depressurize it. Mark changed the data so it looked like they were going south, but they're actually going north. And what's really annoying about that theory in particular is a couple things. The first is it is actually possible. It's theoretically possible to do. It's not outlandish. It can be done. And it's something that, I mean, for all intents and purposes, is an option. So that's number one. The second thing is if that was the... If that was the goal of what they did to get their attention off Russia, what they were doing in Crimea, it worked because it really did take the attention off. So if that was the Russian operative's goal, then it actually did work. Whether or not that is true or not, it did take the media attention off of what they were doing in Crimea. So... Mm -hmm. I hate it because there's just you'll never be able to know, you'll never be able to prove it, but it, it's possible. It, we should also um, point out that the other guy they talked about in this documentary was the guy who found all of those rant, like two thirds of the pieces of the plane. You know that that guy that whatever. Well, some of and, that was um, proven to be not connected. Well, they I think a lot of since, it was, well, since right? the documentary came out, France has come out and said. None of those pieces were actually part of the plane. Yeah. So they haven't found anything yet. So I know what I said has probably made you internally rage. So what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you do you get my point? I I do think like we would be stupid to think that we live in a world where major modern societies like aren't maybe pulling things like this. You know, like do I think that it's possible that countries are intervening and creating kind of like global events to maybe distract or to hide. Absolutely. That to me is believable. But like my question becomes, okay, so in the Russian theory, right, you have three, you supposedly had three Russians involved two stage a fight. So the third one could get into the communications bay. He can't control the plane's direction from the communications bay. He can control um, the like you know like you know blocking out the communication. So and then if he did depressurize the plane from the communications bay, then the other two Russians died. And like to me, it's like I don't know. Like are like are the are these three Russians going to actually go through with a plan where like two or three of them are killed as part of the plan? Like I don't know. And it's I not know like that. Never things been done before. No, I know, but like to me, I don't know. I feel like people are more likely to maybe kind of commit like this murder suicide terrorism for like religious reasons, but like maybe not necessarily like for reasons of country. But I could be wrong on that. I mean, you know, I'm sure there are examples of both, but um and then I don't know. I think the idea of it landing in Kazakhstan like to me like how do you have a I don't know. I think it's like 
wouldn't something have come out, like, even a little thing that would have, like, really made this seem more likely? And everyone seems pretty sure, like, no, it went south. So that's another thing. So this whole theory, like, of, oh, it went north to Kazakhstan. Everyone's like, no, 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 it went south. We know it went south. The data doesn't lie. You know, there, you can't manipulate that data. But you can. What, you know. I, I mean... I don't know. I this is the problem is like we we don't we're not like the proper people to like say yes or no, right? I don't know. So what do you think, I, I think happened? What I want to know what you think. What your theory is? I think my theory is, and they didn't really talk about this, but this is like me kind of like looking up at the end. There was this talk, and let me find it because I kind of want to like have it on standby. Um, there's this idea of maybe hypoxia. So this idea, uh, they, so this analysis by ATSP comparing the evidence, they think that there was an in-flight upset, so like a stall, a glide event, um, and then unresponsive crew or hypoxia, which is um, when the aircraft cabin, um, you know, typically results from human error, or structural failure, or impact causes the pressurized vessel to vent its surroundings, um, and so. This idea is that maybe something happened where, like, the plane... Because here's the part that makes me go, why was it an autopilot for those five hours? No one was alive. Six hours. For those five hours, six hours. No one could be alive for those six hours, I don't think. I think that's on autopilot at that point. Because here's the thing, if you had a live It wasn't turned on for that point, for that six-hour duration, until, like... An hour later, after it deviated from course. Yeah, so that's my question: is like, did did something happen where the 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 air, you know, the the, the plane itself, you know, there's a crack, the, the pressure gets messed up, and they try to turn around, like they tried to turn around to like land back, or then they could maybe the communication there was like an I, that's the problem too there's, is like the communication and the hypoxia are, like, two different things, which is kind of crazy. Like, did both of these happen at the same time? Well, the um, only the only thing that drives me nuts about that, because I get that, but the, the glaring, 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 glaring thing with that is, one, there was no Mayday call at all, ever. No sort of communication of saying, yo, we had an emergency, we depressurized, nothing like that. And also, if, say, okay, they... You know, it blows open. The pilots are incapacitated somehow. They can't do that and verbally call the mayday. There's that system that will automatically send messages at every certain point mm-hmm. to to relay things like that. So basically, if they are incapacitated, it will tell somebody somewhere that says, hey, we've had an emergency on this. Like, there's an issue going on. But that was manually turned off. Why would they do that? So um, my question is, if you're suffering from, like, a lack of oxygen, do you think someone would be in the state where, like, they are not seeing, like, reality? Like, would he – so if there's, like, not enough oxygen going to the brain, he's, like, fiddling with buttons. Maybe he, like, accidentally turns off the communications. Maybe depressurizes the cabins. I Who knows, right? But, like, that order – but then he has to manually, you know, turn the plane, right? But the problem is is – for an hour, you know, guide the plane, but then end up dead anyway, and the plane goes into autopilot? But the problem is the system that was manually turned off that would send emergency messages is a few feet behind them. They would have to get up, move over, walk over, bend down, and pull it. Pull it out. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense. And that, that they proved done. It was pulled, it was manually turned off. Someone, somehow, for some reason, manually turned that system off. And they cannot figure out why. I mean, this sounds like crazy to me, but like, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like if this was a hijacking that was done for like a political reason, wouldn't someone have claimed it? Wouldn't like ISIS or, you know, whomever, you know, come Mm -hmm. out and be like, we did this because of blah, blah, blah. Like, that's what's kind of interesting is like, there's no claiming from anyone so like the hijacking element i don't and also like why hijack that plane like why that plane? also we we can't ignore the fact like personally 
I have 99.9% plausibility that it had something to do with either the pilot or the co-pilot. One of them, I think, did something for whatever reason that we'll probably never know of why they did it. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I have a feeling it was on them. But let's not forget that. Remember they found, they talked about how they found the same exact route on the pilot's home mm-hmm. computer. Mm-hmm. And that that's hard for me to let go. And I know a lot of the pilots said, well, you know, maybe he was just fiddling around and, like, he left it on autopilot in the system. But, like, the fact that it mimics the system is weird. But I've got to say, though, too, like, the whole suicide, if, he, if this was a pilot suicide... Like, hey, why take two hundred thirty nine people with you? I don't get that. Well, that's like, I it's mean, one thing. It, that's one thing if you want to kill yourself. I it takes like a whole like really dark turn to be like I'm gonna commit suicide with all these people. But then two, why not just like just plummet that plane into the ocean? Why let it drag out those six hours? It's like well, the- that to me makes no sense because well, well, it's like. I don't know. Well, that was, what do you think? Th- well, that was the interesting thing that he brought up because pilot suicide has actually happened where there's been oh, 100, yeah. 200 some people on the plane. But every time that's happened, it's exactly what you thought. All of a sudden, they lock someone out and yank the yoke back and smash it into a mountain. That's basically what it is every single time. Why would they go for hours and hours and hours? And the, I mean, so that, that itself leads to, it's like, if it was going to be suicide, why would they? There's no way that they would do it like that. There's no way. Also, well, there and wa- wouldn't wouldn't they? Wouldn't you think too? Like, unless maybe, and this is just an idea. Was it okay? If I know the plane has no fuel, I'm in the middle of the Indian Ocean. There's no way we survive this. Would say that again, right? Maybe the maybe the thought is, if I run the plane out of fuel. We're in the middle of the Indian Ocean. There's no way we survive this. Boom. Well, the, is that the idea? Maybe, but I mean, unless you, he would have had to. If this is what happened, he would have had to have depressurized the plane. Otherwise, you're going to have to be fighting people li- literally for six hours, who are obviously going to try to stop you from crashing the plane. So, mm-hmm. I mean, at that point, it wouldn't matter. Also, let, there was a point that was really skimmed over. And Mm -hmm. um, they also didn't really go into what was going on in the pilot's life at the time. Apparently, some really nasty stuff was going on. Like, he was, I think he had, like, horrific debts and all this stuff. But I don't know enough about that, so I won't really comment. But the one they they briefly mentioned, which I'm surprised they didn't speak about more, is the path that when it turned around and went back over the Malaysian peninsula, peninsula, it flew over a Australian Air Force base. And everyone's like, how did the Australian Air Force not realize? It's like, hey, what the hell is this thing coming, flying over? What is it doing? Why is it here? And just never said anything. They never said anything. Like, what happened there? I mean, they never reported anything. You think if someone's flying over your Air Force space, you'd see what the heck's going on. But nothing ever happened. See, it's... it's I think what's kind of, like, really, like, interesting, though, like, people are like, oh, what if it's a conspiracy? But, like, all the countries that are involved, you have, like, Malaysia, Vietnam, China, Australia, uh, you know, like, I just doubt that there's this massive conspiracy where all these countries would agree to, like, let it go, right? Like, isn't that part, like, Mm -hmm. that part to me is, like, like, and some of these countries hate each other. Like, they have no reason to work together. And also, like, why would they work together? Like, mm-hmm. would, wouldn't, like, here's the thing. If I'm looking at this from a PR standpoint, right? Like, if I'm Malaysia, if I'm, you know, China, wouldn't it be like, okay, we, like, the best case scenario is to find that plane and find it quickly, right? And the idea of, like, well, let's just hide the plane mm-hmm. and, like, let people will forget about it. Like, I think that's a bad move on their part. So that's why, like, to me, it's like, I don't know if it's a conspiracy outside of that plane. Which then points to the, the pilot suicide, I, or if there was someone else on board. No, and and I think you're right. And like I'm, I feel that it has to be some sort of pilot suicide mm-hmm. or something. 
But specifically, because if it was a hijack thing, there would have been some sort of emergency message sent or whatever. A pilot's going to know how to make a plane disappear. They will They will know how to do that and send no messages or anything. Like, if it was not the pilot and it was somebody on the plane, you would assume that they would do anything they could to get a message out and be like, yo, something's going on. But the, the problem with everything, even the pilot suicide thing, is for every fact that points to the direction of, yes, this is probably what happened, there's equal legitimate facts that point it's like this can't have happened Mm -hmm. this couldn't be the reason like for some reason every single theory we've come up with has legitimate concrete facts that point both positively and negatively Mm -hmm. for it actually happening and you can't figure out what's head or tails because we're just missing Mm -hmm. too many pieces of a specifically obviously the plane itself and you know they had, the guy had a good point at the end. He goes, whatever, you know, what happened to the plane that get it to, got it to crash is, you know, a mystery of on its end. He goes, but there's still a physical plane we haven't found. That can't, that like, it has to be somewhere. Now that part. That you can't just be And that part gone. confuses me too because, like, I get the ocean is deep. It is vast. It is a mystery. There are trenches. Like, we have not seen, like, 90% of the ocean. I, I get that. But, like, you're telling me we can't find, like, anything? Right. And th- that's, like, it has to physically be somewhere. It can't just Well, they have disappear. that radar, and it, it you can see the exact, like, last location. Like, we, we really have mm-hmm. searched, like, to full depth, like, that whole entire area? I don't know. What do you think about that lady who was think, looking around on Google Maps and claimed she found it in the South this China This is my – one of the issues I did have with this documentary is, like, I needed them to – like, I think they did a bad job of, like, they, they put they, – they made it seem, like, so hypey, and I needed them to come back around and explain things. I needed them to have someone go, this is why what she thinks she saw is not what actually it was. Or, like, really, I need, like – multiple people debunking or confirming what she saw like and there was none of that Mm -hmm. like for all we know like that's something that's a nothing burger and like but like i hate when it it leaves it up to like i found something and no one is listening to me and it's like period the end like i want someone to go here's why she's wrong you know she's she's she has good intentions but she's wrong you know what i mean so um Mm -hmm. and more of that throughout like especially like i don't know like the russian and the you know the example of it being about like the crate and it got shot over the South China Sea. I want airplane people. I want pilots. I want people in the army, you know, to tell me like why this couldn't happen, or if it did happen, why like what evidence would have happened for us to know, right? Like, don't you feel like mm-hmm. both the Russian theory and the the product theory are like more so colorful stories than they really are anything backed in evidence? And to be fair. We don't have much evidence to go off of. So, like, I get that, you know? Like, I get that we're we're struggling to, like, fill that in. And I agree with you that, like, I feel like they tried to dramatize each one but didn't give – I feel like they needed to more be more quantitative with it and be like, here's here's why. Like that lady specifically in Florida from the image is like, yes, she thinks she sees this, but like here's legitimate reasons why this is probably not the case and no one listened. Whether it's your eyes playing tricks on you or it's the dimensions are wrong or something. Or maybe the other way, it's like we can't really figure out a reason why she's not wrong. It's very possible. But they just kind of left it open to like, here's all these, you know, wild fanatical things. Um I, w- I wish they would have left the last one out and done something different because that, that whole cargo one was a waste of time. I, I would like another about. episode because, like, if you look at – there's actually a page on Wikipedia about all the theories. And I look at this list, and to me there are more that I would like them to have explored versus, like, the cargo. Send me that link, by the way. I want to <laughs> like, read that. There's this whole idea of the, the that um, it was captured by the U.S. and flown to a military base – in the British Indian Ocean Territory. There, you know, some more ideas of, like, crew. There's a shoot-down hypothesis, a cyber attack, vertical entry into the sea. So the idea that the plane may have entered the sea vertically um, because any other angle would have splintered the airplane in many pieces, right? But maybe if it went vertically, it would have just gone down. Um, And they actually have, funny enough, 
uh, physically improbable theories. <laughs> So one of them is I have a hypothesis an idea. that a meteor might have struck the plane, which statistically is very low probability. Also, if a meteor, we would know that a meteor flew in, right? Like there's just no right. Way. You would know that. You would. Know. Here, here's what I want mm-hmm. us to do. What I think we should do. Since you found that page, I want. We're gonna. Go, I think we should do a part <laughs> two of this. And we're gonna we're gonna come and present what our final idea of what we think happened, our final story. <laughs> like you know how the, you know how the guy presented like went through the timeline. I think we should do that. And this is the Paul version. This oh is the Matt God. version. And maybe we have people like decide on. I think we should do that. Uh, see, this is tough. I I well, we could do this because I, I like the idea. We could do this, but I gotta tell you, I just feel like like this is so hard because we don't have any evidence. So, like, both of us could present two... Well, this total, is your homework. We, both of us could present two totally different but yet workable theories, right? Like, I mean, let's be real. And we don't know. Oh, we'll yeah. just, we'll that's never the point. Know. Unless well, they find should. the black box. By the box. way... If they find I, the black box, I'm curious... Then it's game over. Then it's game over. If they find that... Do you that, think... How long can a black box, don't like, know what happened. be fine, you know? I don't know. They've I've heard they've said before, but I, and there's a there's an answer to that, but I, I don't remember what it is. It also depends on the impact. If it got damaged on impact, that's also a variable in the equation. But, um, um, it says I actually see, what do. What would it take to destroy a black box, real quick? Because I'm curious about this. Hold on, before we, b- oh, yeah. before we get into this, um, I actually have a friend who was supposed to be on that plane. No yeah. joke. And um, he got sick and didn't go. He went a different way instead. Um, but he has his mm-hmm. ticket still. So that's pretty weird. That I mean, that's kind of messed up. Like, it, I, like I would be like, oh my god, I could have died. You know. Maybe. So it's extremely rare for a black box to be described destroyed. Um, let's see. Handful of cases where they've not been recovered. Rarely a record a, recor- uh, a recorder is recoverable but blank or too damaged to read. Um, they look very viable. So it should be fine. Yeah, it's interesting. Salt water is incredibly corrosive. It has a nasty habit of destroying things that are normally waterproof. It's so corrosive. Interesting. I don't know. It's also cold in those waters if it did go that south. Yeah. But the beacon should be able to emit a signal once per second while submerged in 20,000 feet of salt water for 30 days. So clearly, it's not emitting a signal right now. Like, it's just... No. No. It's been not almost 10 years at this God. point. Paul, it, it, it gives me so much anxiety. Well, let's like, do it. I, to me, yeah. Let's do okay, it. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. No, because we left this too open. So ne- the the next thing is our final, final, final theories. Yes. And if it's close to each yes. other, we'll that's fine. We'll do some fine. homework. But yeah. let's do that. We'll make it like the Netflix show where it's right. like Sounds good. they have the time and it's like 12, 1230. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 1.10 a.m. And we'll have like the little music behind. Yeah. So we'll oh, get music real quick. That everything. is my big note about this. The music was so scary. And, like, listen, we're already scared. This is a very scary story. I don't need you to, like, have <laughs> music that's, like, designed to really make me want to, like, like scream. Like, I, I was so over the music. Like, the music, <laughs> big F minus for me. It was just too scary. And I, I, I felt on blast. And I, oh. Oh, I love it. It was, it was making you get oh, the jitters. All right, so next time, Paul, we will have right. our theories, uh, our final theories. We'll do some homework, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where we land. Oh. What? Did you hear my pun? My unintentional pun? I said, we'll see where we'll land. Oh. I thought something broke. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to Which say that. Which would be typical Ooh, like, a little distasteful. All right, well, hey, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with Paul and I. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Later. Later.